Good morning, good morning everybody. If you just make your way to your seats this morning, ushers, you might just move the people forward and the foyer people in. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. Come on, stand with me wherever you are. Stand and have courage this morning. Have faith in your heart. Express yourselves to the Lord, amen. This is the Lord's day. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says we shall be glad and rejoice in him. So I want us to rejoice in the Lord. And the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. Not just sometimes, always. And again, I say rejoice. Now I want you to think just before we come and sing to the Lord. I want you to think at least three things that the Lord has done for you this week. Come on, just begin to recall. Because the Bible says that forget not all of his benefits. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to remember the good things that God has done for you today. And the Bible says he is greatly to be praised this morning. Now close your eyes with me and lay, raise your hands to the Lord this morning and just begin to call out the name of Jesus. Wherever you are this morning, whoever you are, wherever you're listening from, know that God is with you today. He is close to those who have a contrite heart. And if you would only come this morning and worship at his feet, he will bestow upon you his grace in his power and his love and father we thank you lord that you're a good good father we thank you lord that there's no shadow or turning with thee lord god we know we are moody we know lord we are changeable we know lord we are up and down oh god and lord we know one thing greater than all these fears lord and all these truths there's a greater truth lord you sit on the throne this morning and you dwell in inapproachable light oh god and we come before a mighty god and we say lord have your way oh god and have have your praise, O oh God. Lord, the first fruit from our lips, Lord God. The praises from our heart, O oh God, will go before your throne. Have your way. Be glorified, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Come on, let's clap the Lord this morning. Let's welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit in this house. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. You love the world, Jesus. You love the world, the Lord.
can wait for eternity join the song they're already singing holy 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 are you Lord. just to bow down before your throne see your face i'll cry out because you're holy Holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of kings. Jesus, majesty. I can wait for eternity join the song they're already singing holy 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 are you Lord. just to bow down just to bow down before your throne see your face i'll cry
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. The Bible says he's given a name that's above every name. Amen. The scripture says the son of righteousness is risen with healing in his wings. He, I am the Lord that healeth thee. His names are matchless this morning, friends. And because we come to worship Jesus, we can also bring our needs before him. And as we continue to worship this morning, I just want to encourage you, if you, have, if you need prayer, if you need anointing oil, you need a minister to pray with you, you need a physical healing or a breakthrough, as we continue to worship, we invite you to come forward this morning. And we're going to trust the Lord for a miracle for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray for our brother Tony Lissarda this morning here as well, friends. Uh, the report hasn't been good, but we're trusting the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask you just to really, really join your faith together as we come around this brother as well and many others that are sick and needing a touch of the Lord. Would you join your faith with us today? Not just now, but every day until we see the breakthrough. Amen. That you will commit to pray for these beloved men and women. But our brother Tony over our missions department here, this, uh, this tumor has come back, friends. And I need to share that with you this morning. But I'm sharing it in the presence of the Lord. Because in his presence there's fullness of joy. And we, know, we need to understand who it is that we serve. His name is Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus we pray. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. You should cast out, in my name you should cast out demons, the Bible says. In my name you should pray over the sick and they shall recover. So will you pray with us as we pray in the name of Jesus for Brother Tony here this morning. Raise your hands to heaven and let's ask the Lord for the mighty touch upon him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you come, come forward, those who love him this morning? Maybe, Kayla, would you come forward and pray for him as well this morning? Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, sweetheart. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord and continue to raise, raise up our brother before the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we just come before you, Lord. We come into your presence, Lord. We come before the throne of grace, Lord. We come, Lord, in time of need, Lord Jesus. We lift this dear brother up to you, Lord God. We thank you for Tony, Lord. We thank you for Joyce and the girls, Lord. We thank you for the rich man of God, the loveliness that he brings with him, Lord, the joy that's in him. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful brother, Lord. We ask you now, Lord, to open, Lord, the, the very windows of heaven, God, and pour out a blessing and a healing upon his life, Lord God. I pray, Lord, you come, Lord, and touch him, Lord God, and vanquish this cancer, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that speaks a better word, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we have an open heaven, oh God, and we have a God that's full of love and benevolence, that you still love this world, and you love this man, you love his family, Lord, and we come before you, Lord God. We ask you, Lord, to bring a mighty healing, a mighty healing, a mighty healing in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah.
give you all.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please take your seats just for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Um, this is a very special Sunday for us because we have a, a number of people going through the waters of baptism. It's a very special time to see people being baptized. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to have men and women have the conviction in a, in a public arena to declare their faith in Jesus. And uh, yesterday I, I was reading this scripture. I quoted to them at baptism class and I'm reading it a little bit prematurely because I was going to read it over the baptism class, but I think it's for you, uh, Brother Tony. It's a scripture that I was going to read. It's for you, baptism people as well, as candidates. It's for all of us. It's a promise from the Lord, and it's from Isaiah chapter 43. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not. I love the King James. It says, fear not. For I have ransomed you, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not be drowned. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children. And your children. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior we serve this morning. You know, this was written, of course, to the Jews as they were embarking on going into 70 years of captivity. And they were passing many rivers to go to Babylon. They were going through many difficulties in life, 70 years into enemy territory, and it's already fulfilled. I mean, we see the Hebrew boys passing through the fire and God keeping them. Amen. Those of you who are being baptized this morning, we're going to invite you up very shortly, but I am so honored to be able to um, stand here this morning and just uh, be part of what God's doing in your life and to go into the waters of baptism after service with you and baptize you. But you've got a promise here. And it's a promise to every Christian. You're going into the waters of baptism, fear not. Fear not what man can say about you, what man can do to you. He's done his best. Hallelujah. Fear not him who can kill the body, but he who can kill the body and the soul. Don't think about what people think. Think about what God thinks. Don't be worried about what they think. Worry about what he thinks. Let your life, the rest of your life, be a life that's dedicated to God. Because that's what baptism is. It's a burying. It's a dying. It's a dying to self. It's a raising up saying, like Christ's baptism, it was a raising up to do nothing other than the will of the Father. It's a moment that you crystallize in your Christian walk where you are standing in the public arena for Christ because of what Christ has done for you. Amen. I said to the candidates on Wednesday, if the Lord in, in this holy book said, I want you to walk up Crow Patrick in barefoot, you would have gladly done it. If the Lord in this holy book said to you, I want you to stand on Patrick Street on your head for a half an hour to show that you're a Christian, you would have done it. But he says, I want you to pass through the waters. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. We're going to have a baptism Sunday today, friends. And I want to 
mark this day, I want to tell every candidate, as you go under those waters of baptism, you are going to meet with a grace of God like never before. I believe there's an impartation of grace when we honor him. Can you say amen? There's an impartation of comfort. There is an anointing of the Spirit that comes across upon every believer that goes through the waters of baptism. It is an augmenting of the salvation that's already there, but it brings it into a whole new dimension in your life. Amen. It takes it out of the closet and it brings it into the world. And so this morning, I just want to read the scripture for you as much as Brother Tony. Tony, study that scripture. It's for you and your family. I will be with you. And not, not, not I, your pastor, but the Lord. What a comfort that is today. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Core Church. It's an honor that you're with us. If you're here for the first time, we particularly give you the warmest of welcome. And just to help us to know, if you are here for the very first time, give us a wave right where you're sitting this morning. God bless you. Well, God bless you. Hallelujah. There's lots of hands this morning. God bless you this morning. Would you do me a small favor? Would you just stand so everyone can see you and welcome you officially? <laughs> Come on. Come on, stand over here. Don't, don't be shy. If you, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. I won't embarrass you any more than this. Amen. Some around, just greet them in Jesus' name. You're so welcome. And thank you for attending the church this morning. Good to have you here. And again, if you're just passing through, just come and say hi after service. It's going to be a busy morning. We're leaving quite quickly to go down to Foreign Woods for a baptism and a bit of barbecue down there. But, uh, and if you're here and you're looking for a church, come and see us as well. We'd love to see you get connected in the life of Court Church. You found a great church, and uh, the presence of God is here, and uh, we would love to welcome you officially as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. If, if this morning you're going to be giving in your tithes and offerings, if you raise your hand good and high, the ushers will come right now and serve you with an envelope. And also important for you to know online as well, the giving is going out online for those who are techie and understand technology. I'm still a bit of a dinosaur. I just did the easy thing. I set up a direct debit years ago, and I don't have to worry about it. But if you want to do it online, you can. And also this morning, you can give electronically in the red carpet area. There's going to be um, a car machine out there, and the ushers will support you in your giving this morning in the red carpet area. So please feel free. If you, if you want to go out and tap, you can do that as well. The Lord bless you as you give. Give cheerfully. Give honorably before the Lord. Amen. And as an act of your worship, and I say an amen, it's an act of worship for the Christians. Not an obligation. It's an act of our worship before the Lord. And it does test us in the area of our pocket because the enemy will, and our flesh will always want to be self-serving. But we're not here to, self, to serve self. I think about Moses when he was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. Do you remember what he said to Pharaoh? He said, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. It wasn't to serve themselves. Amen. And when God set you free from darkness, it wasn't to serve yourself. It was to serve him. And what a great master we serve today. And here we are back again. Thank you. Amen. So um, we have some announcements as well before we pray for the offering. I think they're going to come on video today. Is that right, Patrick? Are we doing video announcements this morning? If you keep your eye on the screen, I think they're going to drop a video for the announcements for the week. God bless you. Hey Church, Jess here, and we are so glad that you are joining us today. We just have some announcements for the week. Here at Cork Church, we do have two services. We have a Sunday morning service that starts at 11 a.m. We are in person right here in the sanctuary. We're also online on Facebook and YouTube, and we even have kids' ministries that coincide with that service from the ages of 4 to 12. We even have a midweek service on Wednesdays at 7.15, again, in person right here or online on Facebook and YouTube. And we have Super Kids, which is for ages four to nine that coincide during that service. But there's so much more that happens throughout the week, so check it out. Hey church, Pastor Stephen here. And James, it says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. And we have been invited into this amazing friendship with God. So we pray on a Monday night at 7 p.m. using Zoom, at 12.30 on a Thursday using Facebook, and then in person on a Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Come, let's enjoy our friendship with God. God bless you. 
Hey young adults, this is Ifra from Cork Church. I just want to invite you to our young adult ministry. We meet here every Sunday evening at 6.30 for some fellowship and a service. It's always a great time. 11 years ago, the Lord brought me back to himself through this ministry, young adults, and he can do the same for you. Invite a friend, see you at 6.30. Hi church, I have an announcement for our Portuguese speakers. Olá, eu quero convidar você para estar conosco todas as quintas-feiras às 7h30 da noite aqui na Cork Church para o nosso culto em português. Esperamos você! Hey Church, Jerry here with an announcement for the youth. If you are 13 to 18, this is for you. Every Friday we meet here in the church from 7 to half 9 for an incredible time of friendship, fellowship, snacks, food, games, worship, followed by the word. We want to see you there. Make sure you're here every Friday. And why not invite a friend to be a part of what God is doing in this youth ministry? As you can see, we have something for the whole family here at Cork Church. Kids, youth, young adults. We even have a food bank, Feed Cork, that's open every Wednesday and Thursday. We are blessed to be a busy church. But if you missed any of these announcements, you can check us out on Facebook or Instagram, and we will see you next time. I just smiling because our Jess has gone to Dublin today. She's flying out tonight, I think, uh, to go for her first ever holiday. She's never had a holiday. And she managed to get a cheap cruise with uh, Nikita. And I'm just so delighted for her. I just wanted to tell you, if you know the, the story about this young lady, she's living by faith here, completely by faith. And now she's going to be, by God's goodness, cruising the Mediterranean. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Um, praise the Lord. Tony, would you, would you come and pray for the offering this morning? Praise God. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name, Lord, for every single thing that you have done in our lives, Lord. Our hearts are full of, oh Lord, thanks, thanksgiving, Lord, and bless when the church is going to give now. Let your mighty hand be upon each, of, each person, Lord, that is here this morning. That you supply the way that you have been supplying, Lord. That you open up the doors. That, Lord, people that are looking to change job or to find a new position. Or, Lord, bless them. That your mighty hand be upon this church, Lord. Also, I know that you have been this church, Lord, because this is a church that gives. Not just to the church, Lord, but this church has been blessing nations. Lord, and I thank you and bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my friend. Amen. Just, uh, uh, Jerry's going to come and do um, a spoken word, I think, this morning, or song or something, Jerry. But as he comes, just to let you know, we started English-speaking classes for Ukrainians this, uh, on this Thursday, and it was phenomenal. And Carl had about 70, maybe 80 people for those classes. They're running to the end of the summer, so if you know someone that's a Ukrainian that needs, wants to learn English, please let them know about this class and, and contact Carl. But isn't God good, amen? You know, they will keep on helping and keep on helping and keep on giving and keep on giving as much as you possibly can, amen? Always be generous. Amen. God bless you. Morning, church. I'm going to do a spoken word this morning from an album I released in 2020 called Testify, and that's what I'm going to do this morning. I was insane in the membrane, probably still am, till Christ came. He took my guilt. He took my shame. He took my pain. He took my chains like he was to blame. He gave me a new name. Now it's hope is to life is to bring him fame. My journey's not in vain. I've readjusted the aim. I've missed a million shots, but church, I'm still not out of the game. Because my friend texts me, Jerry, why are you hiding under a rock? I said, nah, buddy, you've got it all wrong. My life is hidden with Christ in God, so I'm not hiding under a rock because I'm hidden in the rock. He also said, Jerry, <laughs> you don't drink. Like, how do you survive? I told him I got in sync with the king and came alive. Those rooted in him will naturally thrive. I'm his workmanship, so I don't need to strive. Church, he's not a way, he's the way, so by the grace of God, you won't see me changing sides. Because church, one cross, three nails, and you are forgiven. But church, me plus sin is hell forever. But me plus Jesus means I'm always held together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. I'm just going to ask those who are doing the baptisms, or those who are being baptized, would you just come join me on the stage very quickly? All the candidates for baptism this morning, as quick as you can. We want to pray with you. We want the church to see you. We're just going to pray with you. And the service, baptism service is going to be down below, but we're going to pray right now. Come on, let's give them a clap as they come this morning. Come on up here. And Pete. Hallelujah. And I do want our leaders in the front and our invited speakers to come and pray with us as well as we pray for these candidates this morning. All of them are absolutely, I can guarantee you, they're all saved. I, can, I, I did a class with them, and they all know the Lord. They're all saved. They love Christ. And they have some great testimonies here. I'm not going to do that now. But I want us to just pray for them. They've kept na- name tags on them because as the church is growing, it's good for us to kind of familiar ourselves, ourselves with names and get to know them as well. Will you stand this morning and begin to pray and raise your hands towards the Lord and ask him for a mighty blessing. Amen. But Kiron, come on. Why don't you pray for these candidates? And Trace, you after them as well. Come on, you pray for these ones. It wasn't too long ago and you were one of these, okay? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we pray, oh God, that as they, even as it's been read out, Lord God, as they go down into the water, Lord God, and they come out, oh God, uh, washed, cleansed, purified, oh God, that they will step into something that you have already ordained for them. Father, we pray, oh God, that the pathway that you have set before them, Lord God, they will have an awareness of it. They will have, Lord God, an inclination as to the call that you have placed upon their lives, Lord God. We do ask, oh God, for your keeping power as they go down, Lord God, your keeping power as they come out, and your keeping power as they continue to journey with you. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, Lord God, and we trust, oh God, that the days that you have ordained for them will be many and will be fruitful and that your kingdom will advance through each and every one of them and so father we are asking for your keeping power and we are believing oh god for great things for our friends for our brothers and sisters great things in store in the days and weeks ahead that much fruit will come from the lives of those who are being baptized here today and that to be a great witness and a great testimony not just to friends and family but to every place they uh, they, they, they place their feet, Lord God, that you, O oh God, will keep them, that you, O oh God, will go before them, and that you, O oh God, will protect them. Use them for your glory. Use them, O oh God, for the advancement of your kingdom. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name, O oh God. In Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Father, we just celebrate and rejoice with each person here this morning, Lord God, who has decided to dedicate their lives to Christ. Father, we honor each one. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that each one, oh God, would go forward in the strength and in the power of God. Oh, Father, we pray that each one would walk with you, would love you, and would serve you all the days of their lives. Father, we pray, oh God, today, oh God, as they go down and as they rise up, oh God, that they would rise up in the power of Almighty God, that their lives will never be the same again, that today will be a marker, that today they are forever changed and will live for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Praise God this morning. Thank you, guys. Very proud of you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're visiting this morning, we do have uh, uh, Sunday school classes for your children. We have also a televised area on the balcony for you if you have small children. We're not running crash, but we have a, a televised area. You can bring the small children there, and you can catch the service fully live there this morning. There's also translations for those who speak Russian. Um, uh, there's a translation service and we, you can see Helen about that as well today but it's so good to have you in the house of the Lord we want to dismiss all the kids now the sun just good last they're already going God bless them today and again so lovely to see so many new people in if you are desiring to be water baptized you know we're going to be doing baptisms again you can certainly feel free to come and see us we'd love to see you go under the waters of baptism to honor the Lord and it's a great step in your Christian journey a great step of faith And God would truly, truly meet you. Just as Isaiah 43 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Amen. What a promise we have from our God today. And so I'm so excited this morning. We've got wonderful friends with us from Dublin. Kieran and Tracy Buckley uh, have been friends for many, many years at Cork Church. And myself and Catherine, they've been part of the Summer Fire Conference for years. Um, they're, they're, they're a wonderful couple, full of the Lord, full of anointing, called to church plant. They're going to share a little bit about their story. 
And we're delighted to have them. They're both going to share this morning, share a word as well, and encourage our hearts. You know, last week we had the beans, and they shared about what the Lord did in their ministry. This is a similar couple. They've, uh, the passion of power got on them. And what I loved about last week, many people that heard the church planting heart and heard the mission's heart, people were coming to me and saying, we, we, we want to start a house group. We, we, we want to start here. We're praying about a, a, a plant here. So let God speak to you. Amen. Um, this is an organic part about being a Christian. It's that God speaks to you. Can you finish that? That's a quite an astounding thing, you know. Because we came out of religion and he kind of spoke to the guy at the top all the time and he told us what to do. You know, God speaks to you and he wants to speak to you right now to his servants. And I want you, they're going to introduce themselves a bit more, but I want you to give them a really, really warm cork welcome. They're Dubliners, but we want, we, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, they're awesome people, and please give them a great clap, and welcome them into your hearts this morning. Come on up. Amen. Yep, the dubs. They say no more. Um, good morning, Cork Church. It is so fantastic for us to be with you here today. Wow. Honestly, from the moment we walked through the doors, this is our first time here at a Sunday service in this church, so we are just so delighted and honored to be here. And the presence of God is here, isn't he? Wasn't that worship just incredible? And let's give it up for Jerry D in the house. He was awesome. So yeah, we're absolutely delighted to be here. And just before um, we start, so just a little introduction. So we are Kieran and Tracy from Dublin, as you've heard, um, and as you've obviously guessed from our big, thick Dublin accent. We are the proud parents of three children. Well, I say children, so our eldest is 21. Then we have 18-year-old and a 15-year-old. So we're the proud parents of three kids. We've been saved now, been Christians now, for just over 20 years. And we've been involved in many of you might know St. Mark's Church in Dublin City for most of that time. And alongside a fantastic and faithful team, we are currently in the process of launching D24 Church in our hometown of Talla, that's how you pronounce it, Talla, in Dublin. And you know, we came to know your pastors and many of the leadership team here through the Summer Fire Conference that Pastor Nick has spoken about. And you know, we started to go to that back in 2005, wasn't it? Fantastic conference. For those who are new here today, when Summer Fire Conference happens again, you've got to make sure Amen. you are at that conference. Amen. We have been going since 2005, and that's how we got to know many of the team here in, um, in Cork Church. And I suppose for us, we've always felt a kindred spirit with this church. We've always felt a connection. There's such a depth to the word, to the worship, incredible worship, and even worshiping this morning, Pastor Stephen, it just brought us right back to all those years at the Summer Fire Conference. So there's such a depth and the integrity of the word and just your leadership. So we just love this church and have always felt such a connection and a kindred spirit. And over the course of time as, you know, listening to testimonies from the Cassidy family over the years, we have heard of the goodness mm. and the faithfulness of God. And as Pastor Nick said this morning, it's from generation to generation. That blessing passes down to your children. And that's what we love. And that's what we've been looking to as leaders. And that's what's inspired us for so many years. So to say we are delighted to be here is an understatement. And you know, I just loved this morning, even when Pastor Nick mentioned this scripture in Isaiah, fear not for I have called you and you are mine. And that really is the essence of what we are going to speak about this morning. And you know, we would just love to simply share our story and talk about the call of God and how that call has unfolded in our lives up to this point. So is that okay? Our hope this morning is that as we share our story, it will speak to those of you who are new in the faith and especially to all of you who are being baptized today, but also to encourage those who've been on this journey a long time. Because many of us know that sometimes the call of God can take many years to come to pass. But you know, he who has called us is faithful. Amen. And so before Kieran jumps in to share 
a testimony. I just want to lay a foundation. And I feel it's important to say, first and foremost, that the call of God is for every single person in this place. Nobody is exempt from the call of God. Amen? Because the call of God is first and foremost an invitation to intimacy. It's an invitation to know him. The very one who created us, who knows us and who loves us. It's an invitation to come into this unique plan and purpose that he has ordained for each and every person in this place. God's desire is for us to know him in a real and personal way. It's not an invitation to religion. It's not an invitation to a community group. It's an invitation to a relationship with the living God. And that call is for each and every one of us in this place. And God's call is always for our good and for his glory. You know, he calls us from death to life. He calls us to lay down the old and to put on the new. And he calls us to his word and to worship. And he calls us to enter he calls us to enter into the promises, into his promises, and to fulfill the great purpose that he has ordained for each and every one of us in this place. God's call is always for our good and for his glory. And I'm just going to read a scripture before Caroline comes and shares. And the scripture I have this morning, just to encourage all of us, is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. And I absolutely love this scripture. And it says this, faithful and absolutely trustworthy is he who is calling you. And he will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy, by guarding you, by watching over you, and by protecting you as his own. What a beautiful scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. And I mention this scripture, this verse of scripture, because sometimes we can be fearful of the call of God. Or sometimes we can think that we're not good enough, that we're not holy enough, that we're not educated enough. We can even do God's goodness and God's promises at times. And many, we can come up with many different reasons or excuses as to why we can't or why we shouldn't step fully in and embrace the call of God. But as this verse verse says, Cork Church, he is faithful and he is absolutely trustworthy. And I love that it doesn't just say trustworthy. That would be enough for us, wouldn't it? But it says he's absolutely trustworthy. Is he who is calling you? This message is for you here today. Sometimes we can sit in church and think, oh, if only such and such was here. No, he is calling you. This message is for you this morning. And he will do it. God will will fulfill the call that he has placed on your life your life and it is his plan it is his purpose and God just wants us to walk in the fullness and the purposes and the plans that he has for each and every one of us here this morning amen 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 I have a mic we go with this amen so I just want to follow on just what Tracy has been saying with the two things in particular uh, the fourth one being that the call of God can take many years. So our story, our story goes back to 1989. Um, I was 15. Tracy was a little bit younger. And, um, and we had met together. And it, none of us in our family had been saved. We are first generation Christians. And, um, and so we had been dating for a number of years. And then in the early 90s, I don't know if anyone will remember, but the whole rave scene and the club scene really kicked off. And and I liked that kind of stuff, and my friends liked it, Tracy didn't like it, and so we, we, we eventually just kind of parted company, we, we like to say we had a sabbatical for a couple of years, we were on a break, and, um, and so, so that happened for a number of years, and then I, I kind of just got really heavily involved in the whole drug scene, and, and all what that involved, and, and before I knew it, I, I became dependent upon drugs and, and alcohol, it was just that substance abuse that was going on in my life. Um, I got to a point where I knew I needed help. I had been trying 12-step programs. I'd been in a treatment center. Uh, the treatment center worked for a number of weeks. I felt good. I had my sleeping patterns were back, and I'd eating habits were back, and I put on weight, and I felt good. But when I went back out into the world, there was still an emptiness. Even though I had the feeling of doing well, I still felt an emptiness inside that I just couldn't shake 
couldn't ignore but didn't know what to do about it. And slowly but surely, over the course of time, you just slip back into old habits, you slip back into new ways. And, um, and I eventually just went to my mum and dad at the time and said, look, this is the situation I'm in. Uh, I got caught up in, in drugs and, and, and all the usuals, and, and I don't know what to do, and, uh, but I know I need help. And I'd, I'd been in trouble with the police. There was a court case coming up, so I knew it would have been in the papers, and so I had to tell them. I didn't want them to find out from uh, the media. And, and so I found out later on that my mom had went to... So, so where we grew up, there's probably about 50 yards up the road, there's an old nun's convent. Uh, on our road, and, and my mom and her friends went up there every Tuesday night. And so this was early 95, 95 coming into 96. And, um, and so I started me thinking, I said, I don't want this for the rest of my life. I don't want to be chasing a habit, chasing the next, you know, buzz or wherever it was. And, and, and I ended up getting a job uh, in, in one of the biggest factories in Tal at the time, Jacobs. I was the one who put the figs into the fig roll. So... Um, the secret will come to the grave at me. But we had, uh, but we, like, just little things began to change for me. And so I got a job. The, the friends I'd been palling with, we just kind of parted ways, part of the company, found new friends in the job. And one night I was working late, uh, doing a double shift, and I said, on the way home, now, again, I'm not saved at this stage. And so on the way home, we call in on Thursday evening to the local pub and have a couple of pints, and we're in work the next day. And, and I bump into Tracy, Tracy's there on her own, I'm on my own, and well, at the end of, by the end of the night we're on our own, and we just get chatting, and she's not with anyone, I'm not with anyone, we walk, I walk her home, and, and we end up just getting back, we end up just kind of coming back together again, and, and then during all this, Tracy's mom had got cancer, and, mm -hmm. and, and there was just different things that was happening in our lives, her mom was on a search, and, um, and she ended up getting saved, then her, Tracy's older sister ended up getting saved, and then in early 2000, I think it was 2001, we just, we start getting invited to church. We got invited to different events. And um, I don't know if any of you remember, the, the, the guy that writes the word for today, Bob Gass, he, I think, was speaking in the RDS. And it wasn't long after September 11th. Now, when I was in school at 14, 15 years of age in third year, I clearly remember a religious teacher giving us the New Testament and showing us the Jesus movies and talking to us about the gospel. And he would have us reading and talking about it and discussing about it in class. But I remember reading the book of Revelation. I kind of thought, whoa, imagine seeing all this. But when this guy was talking to us, uh, Bob Gass, about you know, the towers had just fallen, the twin towers in America had just fallen, and he was talking about the end times. And something of that time in school just came flooding back to me. And I knew I needed to get on the right side of things. I knew I needed to get my life in order. I needed to get it in order quickly. And not so much quickly, but I just knew I needed to get it in order. And so sheepishly, in the RDS, I don't know if you've ever been in it, but it's, it's, like, it's pretty similar to this, a little bit bigger. But there's tiered seating. And I was up the farthest part of the, the arena I uh, right the back seat, and my hand went as far as my chin, I think it was, when, I, when he gave the altar call. And I made the decision there and then to follow Christ. I knew stuff was happening. We were coming up to Christmas, and just different things was happening. And, um, and so it was then, in 2001, I think it was, we made uh, that decision to follow Christ. And so we started going to Bible studies then, early 2002. And so about a year after getting saved thereabouts, I remember walking into a Bible study in our local area in Tala, and a woman said to me, she says, oh, your tree is a Buckley son, aren't you? And I says, yeah, like, who are you? And I was kind of thinking, be past and all sorts of stuff. And she says, oh, we've been praying for you for years. And I said, really? I said, like, why? Tell me, when? How did this happen? Tell me about it. And so it was, it was me mom and a couple of our friends that went up to the nuns' convent every Tuesday night to pray to pray, to weep, to do whatever it was, to do whatever it took, to, to, to lay hold of someone that was lost. And, um, and, and I would encourage the praying women, the praying mothers, don't stop praying. Whatever you do, do not stop praying. Continue, 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 because God is faithful. I went to my mom and dad in roughly 95, I think it was, 96, and it was six years later I actually got saved. And so, no, Tracy's talking about the call of God. It takes sometimes, it, it, it doesn't take an eternity, but it takes, we don't rush these things. In Isaiah, it says, woe to man that says, let God hurry. So anyway, we start going to Bible studies, 
And um, I would say six months a Christian, and I had this habit of just reading the scriptures. I'd come home from work, and I, I was hungry for the things of God. Because when you come out of a lifestyle of drug addiction, alcoholism, and you're ducking and diving, there's an element of dedication. There's an element of commitment to that lifestyle. And so I just had this mindset, if, I, if, if Christ is who he is, if, he's, if, if these people are saying who he is, and, and he, he is alive, and he does still heal and restore and do all these things, well, then surely it's going to require an element of dedication from me, an element of commitment from me. So I began to read the Gospel of John, and uh, reading the Gospel of John, and I had a habit every day, coming home from work, um, you grab a bite to eat, cup of tea, sit down with me Bible, and we'd, what the 6 one news would be on, I don't know why, but that's, that's just the way I've done it. And I'd be reading, watching the news, and going through the scriptures. And this particular time, yeah, you'd have today's news and the good news, tomorrow's news and today's news. But, we, but, but this particular time, I, was, um, I got to the book of Acts, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. And Acts 20, I think it's 28, it says, be shepherds of the church. This is Paul talks, saying these good boys to the church. And Ephesus says, be shepherds of the church of God, whom the Holy Spirit has made you an overseer. For I know that after I live, savage wolves will come in in sheep's clothing and try and tear people away from the flock. So be on your guard. Now, this was pulled Satan off the page of the Bible, and I knew nothing about it. I didn't know what to do. So I highlighted it, closed it, and just went about my business. The next day, same routine, same kind of pattern I was doing, and a knock came at the door. And there was two Mormons had knocked at the door. So I didn't know anything about it. I talked kind of Christians, Christians, wherever it was. So I invited them in, and I realized, actually, this is different. This is, I realized, you know, I'm, I need to just get me bearings here, kind of thing. So I said goodbye to them. And, um, and the minute they left, I felt God saying to me, now go back to what I showed you yesterday. And sure enough, when I opened, I knew for the very first time, actually God is alive. I was only six or seven months a Christian. God is alive. God does really speak. And this, his, for me, I felt this primarily way of speaking to us is through his word. When we pray, we talk to God. When we read his word, God speaks to us. And I just had this hunger. And over the course of time, I never knew what it looked like or how it would unfold. But I knew that there was a call in there of some sort. And, and, and I knew, it, it wasn't like our past at the time. Like it, it wasn't like, that. So, so be shepherds of the church of God, who, who Nick or Stephen has appointed you, or who, who our pastors back in Dublin at the time had appointed us, whom the Holy Spirit had appointed you. So the call I felt was coming divinely and directly from God and, and appointed for as an overseer of the church. And again, I didn't know what this looked like, but now I'd be sharing it with Tracy and just kind of talk to me, two young kids at the time, Tara and Ashley. And I knew, well, we both knew that, that we were in this for the long haul and we wanted our kids brought up in this. So I set aside a time of just kind of prayer and fasting and seeking God. So Lord, don't just call me. You cannot just call me and have Tracy and the kids kind of tagging along and they're digging their heels in. I said, I ha we have to go. I want us to go as a unit, that the five, well, there was four of us at the time, then all came along, that the five of us would go as one and as a unit. And, um, and that's what took the time for us. It was over the course of time. I remember, I remember again speaking, or sorry, reading the word, and just really getting hold of what God had for us. And I wanted to hear something fresh again. And in First Timothy, I think it was, First Timothy 3, verse 5, or 5, verse 3, and, and Paul is talking to Timothy, and he's saying, um, uh, if a man can't look after his own family, how can he look after God's church? And so I kind of thought, right, well, I need to slow things down here. I need to just not rush, not be, and just steady on. And because and I wanted our family and we wanted that commitment for us to flow. And then over the course of time, just things, different things happened. And there was opportunities we, in St. Mark's Church. And, um, and, and we knew uh, in 2012 then, the job I was in in, in in Jacobs had closed down in 2009. I ended up getting uh, the caretaker at the time in, in St. Mark's. Leo Tormey had passed away, so there was a, an opening there for, want to be the word, for the caretaker role. By now, I've been, we've both been involved in St. Mark's Church, just doing Bible studies, uh, maybe leading an evening service, and just, just getting around the leadership and wanting to learn, wanting to glean 
from those who had walked this pathway before us. And it's no different even now. You know, although we have a great circle of friends, we're in St. Mark's and down in Dublin. We love your pastors. We love what you said doing down here. We love the, the fact that you just go after God in the service for the sake of people. It's just really, really humbling. It's really, really encouraging. And it resonates. It resonates with us. I often think of Mary when she met Elizabeth and it says, the baby leapt in her womb. We were driving from Warford this morning to here, and we got to the roundabout where, coming from off, would you take the left for Trabalgan, I think it is, and it just something just resonates, it's like, yeah, we're in Cork, and it's just that really kind of resonating with us, and, 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 and it does this, so as Trace, there's a kindredness, and so, so we knew that, you know, that God was, you know, bringing people into our lives, and, and so over the course of time, then we ended up, uh, you know, we shared with Sean our heart to pastor a church, to eventually go back to Tala and, and, and set up a church. And, but we wanted to do it right. We wanted to do it well. And, and Sean always encouraged us. So 2012, I came on staff at St. Mark's and, I, um, and, and, yeah, and just different things. I was an elder down there. be preaching, leading services, just doing the caretaker role. And, um, and for six years, I really, 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 really loved it. But then the grace of God began to lift. And I kind of, what's going on? Why, is, why do I feel uncomfortable? And I shared it with Pastor Sean. I said, Sean, I'm, I really feel I'm losing the grace for my position here in St. Mark's and what I'm doing. And we just had a conversation, TJ. We said, maybe, look, we've talked about church planting in the past. Maybe God is kind of moving you in that direction. And I was kind of like, oh, no, no. Because in St. Mark's and in the church like this, you have the covering of the leadership and I was aware that now once we go on church plant, we become that covering. And it just felt daunting. It just felt like, and it was, we were making excuses. We'd often get texts from Sean saying, brother, you want to grab a coffee? And I was saying to Tracy, Tracy, he wants to talk about church planting. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, but I'm ready for this. And so I began to hide behind excuses. And this is the second thing I want to pick up on, what Tracy says, that we find many different reasons or excuses why we can't or shouldn't step into the call that God has for us and fully embrace that. Remember even Adam and Eve. Now we know that they sinned. God created them. They walked in the garden with them and they sinned. But when they sinned, it says they became aware of their shame. They became, aware, they became shameful and fearful. And, 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 and it says they hid. And then God was kind of walking with them. God was kind of you know, calling. He says, Adam, where are you? And they were in hiding behind the trees. And I genuinely felt... At times, I was hiding behind those trees. I was hiding behind excuses as to why I shouldn't do that. God knows all things. So when he was asking Adam and Eve, where are you? He wasn't looking for information. He was looking for them to engage with, the, with, 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 with God. He was calling them out from where they are. When we call somebody, it's to get their attention. When we say, come here for a minute, we want to we wanna be in their company. We want to be, so, so when God calls us, it's the same pope purpose, the same principle. God knows all things. When he's asking the questions, he's simply looking for us to engage with him, to converse and confess our shortcomings, our fears, and our shame. And the fact that God calls us is an indication that he doesn't want to leave us where we are. He does not want to leave. He didn't want to leave Adam and Eve where they were. And the same was true for me. I knew I was losing the grace for where I was at that season. And thankfully, I had a great, I still have a great pastor in Sean Malarkey. And, and we just kind of chatted and talked and teased things through. And it was during those conversations that we began to talk about, well, maybe now is the time to explore the possibility of church planting. We obviously went away, prayed and, and fasted and, and done all the usual things. And so, and so here we are now, coming this October, uh, ready to launch D24 Church. D24 Church, it's D24, it's just, a, it's just an air code. There's nothing spiritual about the name. It's just, a, Tala is known as Dublin 24, and we want our church in D24. There was a guy who's seen a post, he says, this is my kind of church, my kind of people. And so it encourages us, because we know the, the, the lives we've lived, especially back in the 90s, the lives we've lived now the last 20 years, we want people to experience this. We know, there's, we know there are addictions, whether it's Cork City, Dublin City, in Tallaght, wherever that may be, there is brokenness, there is lostness, there is hopelessness, there is all these things. And we have found hope. God has called us and placed a call upon us to be his witnesses in this world. And so all we want to do is step into what God has called. We have never been more miserable when we try to hide away from God's call. And as the grace was lifting from us during that season, or from me anyway, during that season, uh, it was kind of like, look, Trace, we, what are we going to do? We, we can't keep making excuses. We have to go with this. 
we have to just come. And I wonder how many of us maybe are here this morning that are hiding among the trees for fear of just stepping into the call of God, for fear of what we might have to give up, you know, what will it cost, when in actual fact, it's more costly not to respond to the call of God than it is to give up whatever it is that we need to give up. It's more costly for us not to respond. So just don't want to sow that seed because we are going to do a, a, a call in a couple of minutes. And, uh, and just to sow that seed, don't be fearful of God's call and don't hide away. Maybe today is the day that you do step into all that God has called you and ordained for you to step into. Yeah, as well, and I think it's so important to say, and we said it earlier as well, that the call of God is for each and every one of us. So God does call us to intimacy. He always, he calls us deeper. He calls us from the life we once lived and brings us into this new and incredible life in him. But there's also a specific call, and it can be a specific call for ministry. And your ministry, you know, when God calls us, he, he calls us to lead in our homes, in our marriages, in our, in our workplaces, with our friends, with our family. It's all part of the call of God. When God called us 20 years ago, we stepped into it, but now, 20 years later, we're stepping into something specific that he has called us into. So don't misinterpret or misunderstand the calling of God. Our call, the call, first and foremost, is to is for us to accept the call, accept the invitation to receive him as our Lord and Savior and to walk with him because he leads us and he guides us and he brings us into so much more than who we were before we met him. And that's the call of God. It's always to, to, to respond to the goodness of God, to the grace of God and to the forgiveness of God. And, you know, I just want to, um, you know, I just... Even before we wrap up, I was just thinking of, you know, um, Pastor Nick mentioned earlier the scripture, fear not for I have called you by name and you are mine. And we're talking here about the call of God, that God calls us first and foremost to intimacy and to a relationship with him and how sometimes we can hide behind different things or sometimes we might feel you know, do I, I, I've spoken to people and they just think, oh, the cost is too much because they don't want to give up their own lifestyle. But we who have said yes to Christ know that he empowers us. When he calls us, he empowers us. And so we never, we don't walk this walk on our own. We don't attempt to live this Christian life on our own. The Holy Spirit empowers us and he equips us. And it's actually him who gives us the power to live for Christ. And I was just thinking of a story some of you might be familiar with in the Gospels. And it's about the rich young ruler. So he's rich, he's young, and he's a ruler. So he seems to have it all. But one day he comes to Jesus and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And so he's asking Jesus, what must I do? And so Jesus goes on and gives a few, talks about a few of the commandments and stuff. And the rich young ruler says, well, I've done all these things since my youth. I understand these things. So he understood a form of religion. He understood a form of a way of life, of a good way of life. But Jesus says to him, well, then sell all you have and give it to the poor. So Jesus was challenging where his heart was really at. And the scripture says that the rich young ruler was grieved and he was saddened. He couldn't give up what his heart was tied to. And ultimately, the call of God, God wants our hearts. He wants all of us. He wants every part of us. And in that story, the sad part is that the rich young man didn't respond to Jesus' call. Instead, he turned away and went his own way. But we never hear of him again. And Peter says to Jesus, all of these things we have given up for you. And Jesus said to Peter, which I absolutely love, he said, anybody who gives up anything in this life for me, I will reward a hundred times over. You see, our yes is never too costly. Whatever we think we are holding on to that might be too costly to give up for the call of God, it's a lie of the enemy because whatever we lay down, and we are called to lay things down, but whatever we lay down, Jesus in his goodness rewards us a hundred times over. He rewards us with salvation, with peace, with joy, with purpose, with a plan for our lives, with hope, with peace. So many people are hopeless in these days. So many people that we speak to are just looking for peace. You know, Jesus is our peace. You cannot find peace outside of him. So whatever we lay down, whatever we give to God, we can't outgive him. And he promises to reward us. We don't lay it down for the reward but God in his goodness and in his mercy is so good to us and we can never ever ever outgive God and I just love that and we just want to encourage people today 
you know, we all need encouragement along the journey, don't we? And we just want to encourage those of you who are new in the faith. God's call, first and foremost, is for intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's a walk with Jesus every single day. We're 20 years walking with the Lord, and we still need his word every day. We still need to pray. We still need to get into worship. None of us ever fully reach it. We're all on a journey together. But the call is for intimacy, a life lived for the, in the fullness of God and in the promises of God. And the call is also sometimes a specific call. God, will you, who, who knows the plans that God has for you? Well, he says, I know the plans I have for you. The plans for good. Who knows in this house today that God's plan is good? Don't ever let the enemy get in and tell you, oh, well, if you give up this or if you give up that or it's too much, that's a lie from the pit of hell. You know, um, Satan did that in, in Genesis to Eve. You know, did God really say that? He got Eve to think that God was shortchanging her. God will never shortchange us. We can, our yes can never be costly enough. He will reward us a hundred times over. And you know, after everything we've come through in the last couple of years, I just, and we just really feel that if there was ever a time to step into the call of God, church, it's today. It really, really is because who knows? We didn't know in 2020 what we were entering into and who knows what's ahead. But one thing we do know, when you have Jesus Christ in your heart, when you know that Jesus has saved you, that he's got you, that he's for you, that nothing can come against you unless he allows it, you can walk in the peace, in the joy, in the hope and in the fullness of God. And I'm telling you, there is absolutely nothing like it. So don't fear the call of God. Don't fear what you have to give up. Your yes will never be too costly and Jesus is a reward order of those who honor him. So our, our scripture again, 1 Thessalonians 3, 24, faithful church and absolutely trustworthy is he who is calling you and know this, he will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy, guarding you, watching over you and protecting you as his own. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to ask the worship team just to come up. And we want to give you an opportunity. Maybe you're here for the first time and you don't know the Lord. Now, when I, you know, we talk about the call of God in our own lives. I never envisioned 20 years ago that I would be starting a church or planting a church. I didn't understand even the word overseer or shepherd or anything like that. To be, if I'm perfectly honest, when I was coming out of lifestyle, I was coming out of all I wanted was to be able to sleep well, eat well, work well, holiday well, and just have a generally live happily ever after type of lifestyle. That's all I wanted. And that's what I got initially from the beginning. But then God had other ideas. God had other callings. And it was over the course of time, these things began to unfold. But he gave me the grace and he will give you the grace to accept it and to receive it. So even if you do just want a change of lifestyle, it's, very, it's every reason to come to the Lord. Even in, in Isaiah, it says, come, let us reason together. Isaiah 118, come, let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Even that word, come, he's calling us. He's calling us to himself. He says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though you are full of fear, though you are full of shame, though you are full of guilt, come to me. I will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And the invitation goes out for us to respond to that invitation. I'm going to ask just each one of us just to bow our heads where we're at. And I know there's a couple of people here for the first time. And, and, and I just, maybe, maybe you've been coming the last couple of weeks. Maybe you've been coming the last couple of months. Maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. And just while every head is bowed, just that you'll slip your hand up and just say, I want this lifestyle. I want God to change my life. I want a new lifestyle. I want God to work in me, to change me. I want the peace that surpasses all understanding. If that's you, right now, where you're sitting, just raise your hand and we'll have an opportunity to pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says, in order for us to have this life, we must be born again. It's not, it's not an option for us. It's not, you know, we have to be born again. It's, it, 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 we must be born again. It's Jesus who said it. And to be born again, I like to do it this way. It's as simple as A, B, C. We acknowledge A, our need for a Savior. We B, believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. And C, we confess him as our Lord and Savior. So for those that have raised their hands and want to give their lives over to the Lord and begin this journey with him, I'm going to ask that maybe all of us will just repeat this prayer after me. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I confess my sins to you and ask for your forgiveness. I invite you into my life and ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Today I choose to follow you. Today I choose to believe you. And today I choose to respond to your call. Fill me with your presence. Create in me a clean heart. And renew in me a steadfast spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can we just encourage those that have made that decision? We are going to, we're going to rise to our feet. We're going to go into a time of worship. Just one more song. And if you want prayer for anything, if you feel, you know, you want to respond, you want to just share what God has done in your life, feel free. There's a a team here that will pray with you. And we'd love to hear your story also. So let's just stand as we worship. You give life. Give your life to Jesus. It's the, it's, the, it's the most wonderful thing you can do. Not just from to save your soul, but to save your life as well. Amen. And, you know, if that was you this morning and, and you, you put your hand up because you saw something in this couple, what you saw in them is Christ. 
You saw the life transforming power. The passion you see in them is something that God has put into them. The journey they're on is a Holy Spirit led journey, and it is an exciting journey. It's the, the greatest thing you can do with your life is to give it to the Lord. The greatest form of existence is living in the will of God. To live outside of that, friends, is, it's nothing. It's sawdust in your mouth. It's just paying bills. It, I don't care how much money you have, you're just paying bills. You're just looking over your shoulder. But to have the purpose of serving Him and giving your life to Him and for His glory. For however long that is, friends, to be able to say, I've, I've run a good race, I've fought a good fight. To be able to look back at a life well lived, knowing that it's been given to God. That is why you were created. That's why you're here. That's why you're here this morning. Because God saw this moment, even before you were born, He saw this very moment that you would give your life to Him. But in that transaction, if you're giving your life to Him, He gives His life to you. So what a bargain you got today. You give Him very little possibilities, and He gives you all the possibilities in filling you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of you who've been on the road a while, Christians, let it be something that each and every one of us takes to our hearts to be considering the call of God. The call of God, something, certainly for some, will be to plant. Others, just to open up your, your home again as a living testament to the gospel. To invite people in, that your lives become a true reflection of Christ. Others, this morning, it will be that you start opening your Bible again and start to read. And start to let God communicate to you because you haven't done it for so long. You're, you're anemic as a Christian. You're weak. You're not growing. Open up the book. Every day, feed. Man shall not live in bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. You need to hear what God has to say to you. You can't live without it. And every one of us need purpose. And our purpose is not just about our own family units. That's very important. But it's just, I, I, we live to do His will. Amen. So as we leave this morning, we leave to go to a baptism service a few miles down the road, which everybody's invited to. I hope you come and join us. We have barbecue there. We're going to have some fellowship. And we're going to see uh, the results of men and women giving their life to the Lord, going through that great, great testimony for Him. But I, I am very challenged because two weeks in a row, we've had two couples in here and they've, they've recharged my heart and challenged me as an individual as well. And I hope you to consider the life that you now have. The greatest form of existence is living in God's will. Many are the plans of a man's mind, but the Lord orders his steps. Maybe this morning you will recalibrate. Maybe you have been running from the voice of God, running from the will of God. It's very easy to get full of noise again. The minute we leave here, we can get full of noise. But you have to right now, and I'm going to pray one last time with you, that what you heard, that the Holy Spirit will, will sink it into your heart. And it will not leave you, amen. And that you'll get many, many days on this journey, amen. God will touch you many oases on that journey. They'll be touching from heaven for you. But you have to, have to seek for us the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will get added to you. Can you say amen? Everything else comes to you. Wealth will, wealth will come back. Opportunities will come back. They all get added to you, but it's first of all the kingdom of God. And have you heard what the Lord has been saying to court church these last couple of weeks? His kingdom. You know, Pastor Carter used to coin a phrase by saying, for the glory of God and the souls of men. And by the grace of God this morning, I as your pastor, you as our friends in the Lord, that we would all commit to that place. Father, I pray even now. Come on, raise your hands to the Lord. Say, God, would you please, Lord, do only what you can do, Lord. We have been stirred, Lord, these today for sure, Lord, last week for sure, Lord. We've been stirred, Lord, to see a higher way of living. But only you, Lord, can take that now, Lord, and put it into our hearts. And I pray but through a miracle of the Holy Spirit that, Lord, this will seed right into us. This will augment, Lord. This will unite with our soul. Lord, this passion to live for you, to give our life to, for your glory, God, to live for the souls of men and for your glory. And I just pray, Lord, for those young ones that have gave our hearts to you today, Lord, those who have prayed that sinner's prayer, those who have been spoken deeply by the Lord, that you have so touched them, Lord. They would be so God-gripped that men and women will be amazed at them. They will be gripped, God. When, when, when Kiran talked about, Lord, he was all in, Lord. That was it. When he gave his life, Lord, he knew, Lord, it took a level of commitment and he was all in. I pray that will be the same for all of us, that we say we're all in now. We're all in, 100%. Whatever, Lord, good or bad, Lord, whatever comes down that road, it's like a marriage, Lord. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and health, oh God, we're with you now, Lord. So we pray you bless us and 
And God, just do a great work and continue to do that work in our hearts, God. And as if we leave here this morning, Father, your presence will go with us. As we go down to farm woods, oh God, you protect us as we get there. Bless the food when we get there and bless the fellowship. We pray for the weather, Lord, even the weather, Lord. You will open the sunshine to pour upon your people again, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we bless you. We love you, Lord. You know, this morning, folks, I don't normally do this. Uh, I, I don't do it at all. You know that you're here long enough. But I, I do want to support this uh, church plant. Uh, I want us to be praying for it. I want us to financially help with it. And if, if you want, want to consider in your heart this morning, um, you know, to give a gift or to give a, an, an ongoing gift to help this work, because we're all about trying to help the church establish in our nation. Amen. So if that's you this morning, you want to give. I don't, I don't even know if our ushers are able to take an offering this morning. I don't know, but... Can you hold it in your heart? You can pledge it. You know what? Well, ushers, could you, your easy to let the hand around envelopes this morning and some pens. Just give it one or two more. If you have no money this morning, you can put a pledge in and say, I, I want to give this to, to D24, to this work of God this morning. And I don't have it now, but it's going in next week for D24 or the week after, whenever you have. Uh, if you want to be part of what God's doing there to reach that very, very needy city of Tala, over 80,000 people I think live in that area and it's, it's rife with social disorder it's, but it's ripe for the gospel it needs the gospel, it needs men and women to go in there and share the life of Christ and you know, raise your hands and give you an envelope, if you say I don't have it now but I'm writing my name in here and I'm going to, I'm going to give all that money will go to D24 Court Church takes none of that, that will go straight there and if you want it on a monthly basis you can talk to us, we can set up a DD for that, direct debits, where you can help support the work of God there, I think it's so exciting that the Lord is raising up churches in this nation, now amen I think it's so exciting that we've got tremendous Ukrainians coming to this country who know Jesus because they're going to help grow the church as well. Amen. I mean, they're under trauma. You're under trauma this morning. A lot of things happening, but God is raising you up and God is going to establish you here in this country for his glory and his name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray for this cup. Can our leaders, Tony, Andy, Pastor John Ramos, and uh, pa Pastor Patrick, can you lay hands on Kiron and Tracy Butley this morning? Hallelujah. They're going to need our prayers. Come on, they're just a young couple, a young family going into a city of 80,000 people with no finances, no building, no hope in the, as regards the way the world will look at it. And so they're going to need your prayer. Can you raise your hands to the Lord this morning and ask for the protection, the blessing, and the sp supply of heaven upon them? And when you go to Dublin and you're looking for a church in the Tala area, D24 is where you're going to go and support them and pray, pray and worship with them. If you're moving to Dublin, you're going to pray about going to D24. Father, we pray right now, Lord, for this precious couple, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, you do, Lord, exceedingly above, Lord, what they could even ask or think, Lord God. Thank you for Kiran, Lord God. Thank you for Tracy, Lord God. Thank you for the call of God that's on their life, Lord. Now I pray you fill them and strengthen them and bless them, Lord, and give them such reassurance, God, that you're with them on this journey, O oh God. Bless them, I pray, O oh God. Keep your hand upon them, Lord God. Supply every need, Father God. Open the door, Lord, that no man can open, and shut the door that no man can shut, O oh God. And Lord, order their steps, O oh God. We pray, Lord God, Lord, for, the, the, for them to always have that source from the Spirit, O oh God, that they will always be in sync with the Holy Spirit. God, I pray, God, that you will give them the supply of finances, Lord. You will give them ideas, Lord, to unlock doors, O oh God. I pray you give a great team of ministers around them, Lord. You will save some, O oh God, that will become elders in this church, O oh God. But there will be a great touch of God upon their ministry, Lord, upon their marriage, upon their children, O oh God. Bless them, Lord, and bless all those, Lord, who are hearing the call, wherever they be, here or in other churches, Lord, that they will rise up and they'll go out, Lord God, and establish works in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We pray for a last day's harvest in our nation, O oh God. We pray for our Ukrainian brothers and sisters who are bleeding and, and hurting from the trauma they've come through. But Lord, you have brought them here to bless the work of God, to establish the testimony of God in this nation. I pray you bless them, O oh God. And as we go this morning, God, I pray, Lord God, we go in the joy of the Lord and in your strength, O oh God, knowing that you're for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We bless you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Praise God, praise God. You know, before we leave, you know, before, hallelujah, before we leave, I'm going to give some instruction. But I'm looking at Tony Lissardi there. Over 30 years ago, went to the mission field. John Ramos, the same way. Patrick went to our Bible school. And he came from South Africa. Can you say God is good this morning? Amen. He rose these men and many women into the work of God. What a great God. Now, I have to give instruction before we leave. If you need a lift to, uh, um, where are we going again? <laughs> foreign Woods. If you need a lift to Foreign Woods, you need to meet in the red carpet area. Brother Andy's there. He's going to try to coordinate lifts. If you have a space in your car, please don't run out the door without filling it. It's just bringing someone with you and bringing them back here to Cork Church when it's over. Even if you have to leave early, they'll go with you early. But please don't, because there's loads of people who want to lift this morning. We don't have our, our bus anymore to bus people out there. So, again, make yourself friendly. And if you're on the way out there, you know, it's, it's beyond Ballancolly. You take the road towards Killarney. It's out there about 15 miles. You take a turn off to the right, and then it's, it's all the way to, uh, you'll see all the signposting for foreign woods. We're going to have barbecue there. Can you stop in the way, bring something to share as well? We'll have drinks there. We're going to have a great time, regardless of the weather. Amen. We're going to baptize, regardless. The Bible says, he who regards the wind will not sow, not the rain will not reap, or maybe the other way around. So we're going to sow, we're going to reap, regardless of the weather, because this is Baptism Sunday. God bless you all. To God be the glory. Amen. God so loves the world